Create modes in wrestling games have been a huge selling point in the genre since being popularized in the late 90s, specifically wrestler creation. Back in the 2D era of wrestling games, this mode was a rarity, but the Fire Pro Wrestling series of games would change that, allowing players to fully customize their own appearance based on in-game pieces used to comprise the featured rosters, as well as the ability to create completely customizable movesets. WCW NWO Revenge, released in 1998, featured a costume change mode where players could edit each of the four preset attires for any given wrestler, allowing the ability to not only change colors on existing attires, but also a wrestler's entire appearance. Want to see Hogan as the Pinkster? Go right ahead, my man. Fans of the game know how much this added to the overall replay value, as though the mode wasn't as intricate as it would later become, there was still a lot of time that could be spent here. Also in 1998, WWF Warzone would hit home consoles, featuring the first fully functional create a wrestler mode, complete with options such as gender, skin tone, size, clothing and accessories that can be applied to the head, upper body and lower body of your wrestler, as well as fully customizable attributes, moves, and even theme music. This mode would help propel the sales of WWF Warzone, with many critics applauding the creative freedom within this mode. WWF Attitude would release the following year with an expanded version of this create mode, featuring even more options than before. When WrestleMania 2000 was released in the fourth quarter of 1999 for the Nintendo 64, fans were finally able to create their own wrestler from scratch on the ever so popular Aki game engine. While they couldn't legally include the visual assets from WCW NWO Revenge, they were able to include moves, taunts, and entrance animations from the WCW wrestlers, leading to more innovation than ever before as we could now more realistically create wrestlers from other promotions with lifelike personas to match. In addition, we see the ability to edit each wrestler's current attires, such as we did in Revenge, but here we aren't limited to just clothing, as everything from hair to tattoos and even body type could be altered. Those animations from WCW NWO Revenge, in addition to WrestleMania 2000, would also carry over to the game's successor, WWF No Mercy, leading to many hours of entertainment for those hungry to create. Not many WCW games featured a full-blown create-a-wrestler mode. Games like Vs. the World, World Tour, Nitro, and Thunder were all released before create modes would become commonplace in a wrestling title. WCW Mayhem, released in 1999, did however feature a create-a-wrestler mode, albeit quite limited compared to the competition. With very few options here, less than even WWF Warzone, which came out over a year earlier, there just isn't a whole lot of depth to this mode and despite featuring more options in the game's successor, WCW Backstage Assault, the visuals and gameplay took such a step backwards that it truly didn't make a difference. When the SmackDown series hit the PS1, it also contained a create a wrestler, I mean superstar, option. And while the mode isn't bad by any means, it doesn't feature the innovative options we received in previous titles, such as the ability to edit multiple features of the head, such as hair, eyes, and nose. The same can be said about other body parts, where attire and items are equipped together as a package deal and can't be edited or separated. As the series progressed, we would see this mode refined, with many more options being introduced each year, and with the addition of taunts and move animations of wrestlers from other promotions, both past and present, it was now possible to experience that same level of creativity that we once saw back on the Nintendo 64, and then some. WrestleMania 19 on the GameCube would introduce a fully customizable entrance creator that would become the standard many years later, complete with the ability to string together different animations throughout the duration of the entrance, as well as strategically timed pyro, lighting, and other visual effects. Raw 2 would also feature such extensive entrance options, but had a one-up on the GameCube with the ability for the player to use custom soundtracks from the console's hard drive as entrance music. This took a mediocre game and elevated it to new heights for many fans of the genre. This is one area where newer games in the series shine bright. With more options than ever before, it's now possible to create just about anybody you can think of, spending hours on just one wrestler. The Create a Wrestler mode, in my opinion, really helped propel the genre of wrestling games. Sure, us diehard fans were going to play the games regardless, but because of these modes, we played them longer, more often, and passionately. 
Watching our very own creations walk across our television sets as our young minds process the satisfaction from the hours devoted to forming these designs. I can't imagine these games without such a wonderful mode. And because of that, I won't even try. We'll make movies. 